Hello, hello! So, uh, last time we did some, some train designs. We cleaned that up a little bit. So now it looks something like this. It does use a lot of red belt. I'm not entirely sure that we'll end up using this much red belt, uh, because it, it does get a little bit pricey, but honestly with burner stuff, it might be fine. I'm mostly concerned with the amount of input speed rather than, like, the materials to make red belts because for the most part it's not that hard to get the gears it's really hard to get the inserter inputs inputting fast enough so we just need a ton of assembling machines however we're not using that many undergrounds in our outposts so we might be fine like this might produce enough because this does have I, I think this produces one every like well let's see it has four inputs so we can say four gears so this produces one every 10 seconds that's actually not that much That's actually not much at all. Uh, we'll definitely need more. Because one every 10 seconds means like 10 minutes to get this, which is, uh, whoa, <laughs> way too slow. I, I think our regular belt, red belt production is higher, though. So, well, we have a couple options. One option is to do maybe a smelting lane like here. It, it would be a little bit weird, but we can definitely do a smelting lane in a weird spot whenever we get our first batch of iron. That That could help. Now we'll just have to make sure that these are in a blueprint that gets built before the other, like, ten come online. Otherwise, that would be bad. And then another option is to just see if we can get a little bit more production here. Because we might have some spare iron whenever these back up. Or we, we might just have enough buffered by, by then. I'm really not sure, but I, I think it'll probably be okay. 10 minutes per outpost, though, is definitely too long. Considering uh, th that means it will... <laughs> well, actually, is it? Yeah, yeah, considering it's what makes the entire base run. Yeah, well, we definitely need to get that down a little bit. Uh, we also do have this, though. I don't know how much this produces. And this will have been buffering stuff for, like, the past, like, hour or two. Which also changes it drastically. Like, it's a lot less important to have a high production if you have a buffer. But we're going to keep using more underground, so we'll, we'll figure something out. Realistically, we probably need a smelting lane, like, off to the side in a very awkward spot. Uh, this is what we did last time with the inputs. It's a little bit messy. Okay, it's a lot messy. Which I don't love, but we don't really have a ton of options in that department. So let's see, which, which layer is it? Okay. Uh, we might be able to change which side the fuel, the copper, goes on, though. Because I don't think it strictly matters which is which, right? Like, this design works and this design works. They have the same effect, and and they're not, like, mirrors of each other. So we, we can make either work. So unless we, like, actually have some kind of split halfway down the line, we can change which side copper goes on which is nice uh, like this one this one we don't have flexibility to change which side copper goes on but this one we do yeah trains although the train part is mostly done what <laughs> what? what is that um you know we're just gonna uh, yeah that's actually that probably broke stuff well we're stuck with it hopefully it's not too bad uh, the train part is mostly done. Now we're trying to connect the outputs from the train, which is, I, I guess, the hard part, actually. So maybe I'm I'm too ambitious. <laughs> okay, so this is 24. That is a full lane of copper. This is a full lane of copper. However, this isn't side-loaded, so this doesn't actually work. But a side-load is really easy. What about this? Uh, same thing. Okay. Is this better... It's one fewer entity, but it's probably not not worth the cost. Actually, wait. Why don't I just do this? Does that reach? No, it does not. Unfortunate. That would that would have been cool. That would have been nice. One can dream. Not too bad. Uh, do they? That doesn't sound right. Oh, you mean ghosts. That's a good idea. 
That's, yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I thought you meant, like, actually use them, and I was like, that doesn't track. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely, like, upgrade these. That makes sense. I mean, I don't really care that much. Uh, oh, it's a grand total of, like, 20 entities, probably, over the course of the run, but it is a cool idea. I, I definitely can't justify doing it. Uh, in this iteration, but we, we can keep it in mind for the, the, the redesign. So, yeah, I guess that saved three entities. Mostly because I don't want to have to track down <laughs> where the belts are, and there's a good chance if I build it like that, I'll probably downgrade it. At least nothing will break if I do end up downgrading it. So that's nice. It's like a low-risk change I can do later if I really want to. Okay. So this is consuming two full lanes of copper, right? Actually, this one might not be. There is a good chance this doesn't actually have enough copper production to consume a whole lane. Which is kind of annoying. Because it affects my ratios. Like right here, you, you can kind of see it here. Uh, this one... We have them downgraded because it's a little bit cheaper, which means this is probably the same, but this is... I, I think this was built before I realized that they should all be downgraded. Because I didn't think it mattered that much, and honestly, it doesn't matter that much. But considering it's a free change, like all it costs is the five seconds it takes me to do this, There, there's no real reason not to. Because that does save like 24 steel furnaces, like that's not nothing. It also makes it a lot easier to balance the resources, because that should have the perfect ratio now. 3 to 2. Yeah. Uh, it does waste It does waste a little bit more fuel. That is the... Okay, so it doesn't have zero downsides, but I'm pretty sure the amount of fuel savings is not that significant over the course of the run. Technically, it could be. Because that is a change I'm making that does waste fuel it is one of those changes that if i change my mind this is just a simple upgrade planner uh we could fix all of that in a matter of like a minute uh, if i realize if i do the math and realize i do in fact for some bizarre reason need that fuel also we don't have sulfuric acid at all uh okay we're i don't know where that needs to connect but that needs to go on the to-do list sulfuric to first, that is weird that I can keep typing while it's auto saving. Sulfuric to first blue chip lane. There we go. Uh, that can be. I mean, it's uh, essential, but it can wait. It's not that important right now. Okay. I think. Let's see. There's something I wanted to do. Solid fuel compressor. Okay. So I decided last time that I probably wanted to have undergrounds going all the way up compressing fuel to the left instead of how I have it where I have like a splitter here I uh, just I mean I'll still have the splitter here but we definitely need some way to keep the solid fuel going along the entire path so what if we do this send that to the right send this down and then that can go here, and then for now we can just give it an infinity chest. Because basically the issue is we need a lot of solid fuel in a lot of spots initially, but we don't need a high quantity all the time. Uh, this actually doesn't need a pro This actually is supposed to have a... <laughs> this is supposed to have prior the other way. There we go. Yeah, basically we just need a, a high saturation at various points, uh, and this helps with that. So that way we can compress into, let's see, this this could actually get two belts if I really wanted to. Let's see, where does this go? This doesn't go anywhere, so this doesn't actually, never mind, this doesn't need two belts at all then. Am I building this in the right layer? It looks like it. Let's see, we can save one entity, one entity is not generally worth twice the iron. I don't really have a perfect rule of thumb for that. <laughs> it just doesn't feel like one entity is generally worth replacing something with an underground. It's like here to here. Uh, this costs nine iron, I think, or four and a half iron. Whereas this costs like uh, 20. Pretty sure that's the ratio. Because yellow undergrounds are 
very costly if you don't go the full length. I mean, that's true for all the undergrounds. I just feel like yellow belts are the worst. Okay. So if that is there, this should probably go straight through instead. Yeah. That's fine. These are all going the wrong way. <laughs> That's uh, excellent. Okay, actually only one of them somehow ended up flipped. That's weird. Okay. Uh, that should be good. Although this actually starts a little bit slower than I would like. So maybe it was better the other way. Nah, that's nah, probably fine. Because the other way actually used this one. Nope, I was right the first time. This is the one I should use, because uh, this gets a uh, this get these both get their own fuel belts, and that is that is important. Okay, yeah, this is a very trial and error phase, but we need to get this done so we can actually like confirm our base is uh, finished, uh, and this is fairly important, one might say. Uh, let's move this back, make it prettier. Uh, it's not strictly useful, but it is prettier, and that's always nice. Okay, and then iron is somehow going to connect weirdly. Then I have this here because I know iron is going to come from the top. Then we have solid fuel here. We have an iron lane here and here. So realistically, we should just take from this one. Or we could take from this one. Uh, you know what? I don't actually want these to be underground right now. Because we're actually going to be cutting this entire section and moving it to the left once I know how long the underground should be. Which, let's see, how do we, how do I do this actually? Hmm. Trying to find a good way to like compress this for testing purposes. Uh, maybe I move it here. But yeah, the, the gist of it is I think we'll be able to save like 12 tiles here, but I won't, I don't want to do it until the end just in case I miscounted. So if we keep them as straight lines, it's really easy to cut and put it together. If we do undergrounds, there's going to be some continuity. Things will break. And that would be bad because that will take a long time to fix. Okay, but this is only one lane of iron. It goes here, here. Does the side of the iron matter? Because I feel like we can make this a little bit easier if the side doesn't matter. Actually, I don't really see a good way to side load iron, so maybe it doesn't... Yeah, maybe it doesn't really matter. We can send this that way. That could work. Uh, we do need sulfur probably to be over here. We need to figure out where it's being produced, though, so it's not that important. Yeah, iron is definitely going to come from the top. Actually, it's probably going to come from... It's probably going to be like here, and then it's going to take a left. Uh, but either way, it's not something we can sideload onto the bottom. Unless I sideload it ahead of time. We could do this. Don't know if this is better, though. Like, something like that would technically work. Let's see, how far up can it be? That gets the left side. Honestly, this does work. <laughs> uh, this requires us to do a bunch of splitters, though. I, I feel like that's a little bit messy. Well, is it is it messier than the other option, though? I don't think it is. Because either way, it requires two splitters. The only thing this maybe uses is extra entities. Yeah, I think this actually works. Because I didn't like how many splitters it has, but either way we'd need a splitter here and then a splitter, a second splitter, unless we wanted to use an inserter. Uh, but we can't really use uh we can't really use inserters in this one. Like I know in uh standard like speedrun smelting lanes you use inserters to distribute fuel. Because our fuel requirement is so much higher, we can't really do that. And also, we can't grab from underbelts consistently, especially if they're like this. So yeah, we we lose all of the good options for, for fueling. So we have to resort to like the classics. Okay, the classics don't generally look exactly like this, but the idea is there. 
Okay, so these are being split properly now, so that's good. At least we'll finally be able to test if our base actually runs. That's nice. I will probably have to do... Honestly, I, I should just not worry about individual lanes. We can just do a rebuild later. See if everything runs. That's probably our best bet. Okay, and then this is another basically identical lane. Uh, if, it looks like this is the same as this, except without the, the blue in the center. It instead just has an iron distribution. Actually, no. It just has a gap. It basically just has a gap in the center. Uh, so that way I could fit these. Yeah, that, okay, that's the only difference. Uh, this has this on the end, which it makes it basically equivalent width. Is it actually the same width? Okay, it, it is shorter. No, it's the same height. <laughs> wow, so blue chips don't add any more height over using, uh, having to add uh, wire assembly machines on the end. Wow. I love burners. Okay. So if this is the same one, we should be able to copy basically the entire fueling system. However, um, the alignment's going to be screwy, so it should be fine. Let's see. If we double check, it does not look like it matters what side of the belt anything goes on. However, we will probably have to fix it here. But that is... Oh, actually, is it fixable? This one doesn't look like it has a ton of flexibility, but we can probably make something work. Uh, for now, let's move it over, see how things go. So can I just, let's see, where's the, where's the copper distribution? So this is the one that we're technically trying to copy. That does not look like it lines up with anything. What is this design? <laughs> oh, okay, I think I, I think I see how it lines up. I think that's right. And then we needed the copper. Okay, I think I think we're good. Yeah, okay, so that, that's where the copper connects. Perfect. And then this one was the solid fuel. However, we need to make sure, let's see, let's follow this. Uh, this is not correct, actually. Copper needs to be on the other side for this design, which I think is fine because copper is going to come from the bottom. So we can actually we can actually live with that. Uh, it's not a problem at all. Now, can we? The real question is, can we take this and flip it? Because that would be very convenient to not have to do any kind of redesign. Perfect. We can. Okay. So this is probably going to be here then. And then we can continue it through. One will go into this lane, and then the other one will continue on into the future. And then copper, solid fuel, whatever we're building can be side-loaded there. Okay, now let's move this as far over as it can go. I feel like this is using up a lot of space. You know, maybe we will, maybe we won't be able to shift this. I mean, it's not the end of the world if we don't. It's not that far from the base. I was just really hoping we could compress it like eight tiles. But it's uh, this is a good chance that's not happening. Is there a way to save entities here? Wait, how are these different sizes of belt? Nah, it doesn't matter. I usually stagger these the other way, so I, I usually do something like that. I think, I don't know. Uh, but usually these are staggered, so it's really weird seeing them lined up. Or maybe I'm just used to seeing them from the other direction. Maybe it always looks like that. I don't know. But either way, it's not important. Okay, so we have fuel here and then we have two lanes so we can send one dedicated belt directly into here I think is a good idea okay uh, we actually would want this a little bit higher uh, this doesn't do anything yet but yeah we want this as high up as it can go perfect okay good uh, this probably isn't how I want the compressor to be designed, but this has a very, very long belt, doesn't it? Yeah, this needs a full belt by itself, so we definitely need a, a full-on compressor. If we do this, we do need to rotate it on the end, which isn't, a, which isn't inherently a problem. But yeah, we need to make sure this can get up to a full belt. 
I don't like how this is only actually three belts of fuel, but there isn't, there aren't really great options. I guess I could technically have another fuel lane, like, right above here. I don't think that is inherently a problem. Although, we probably run into solid fuel issues. Actually, I should check real quick. I don't know if we're going to have fuel issues, because I'm not sure how fast refineries are. Oh. That's very slow. <laughs> uh, right? Is it a... Is it a... Well, okay, but with cracking, it's probably like a 3 to 1 ratio, right? There, There's some... Pro somebody probably has the exact ratio. I, I do not know what it is. I think I might know what it is if I look at this, though. I, I think this is the ideal ratio-ish. It's close to the ideal ratio. So we can do 20... We can do 20 chemical plants with seven refineries. So it's like a three to one. And that uses up all... That uses up every aspect of the cracking. That's not too bad. 20 to one. 20 to three, huh? Or, sorry, 26 to 7. I think it's closer to, like, 24.1, but we can't do that because of rounding. So let's just call it, let's just say, yeah, 26 to 7. Which means this is not nearly as easy to run as I thought it was. <laughs> we need 14 refineries for every... Re oh, gosh. <laughs> It's not, a, that's not that bad. Like, fuel is cheap. It's just a lot more than I thought it would be. Uh, I think we're going to have issue getting water everywhere, actually. We might have to look into doing basic oil refining. I'm not entirely sure. It, it depends how easily I can get solid fuel. Because this uses, like, an entire belt of, this uses, like, an entire pipe of water, I think. Yeah, so this right here basically uses one and a half pumps that's 112 refineries which is 400 chem plants okay that's actually not that bad 400 chem plants is 15 16 ish lanes of solid fuel so maybe maybe we'll be fine because if we can just do one pipe somehow and get all of these like as long as the pressure isn't terrible that could work like one pipe on this side one pipe on this side that would give us 30 total lanes of solid fuel that's probably enough for our base. It sounds really low. Like, I don't know why. I, I would have not thought that 30 yellow belts of solid fuel sounds low, but this run is really skewing my perceptions of numbers. <laughs> okay, we're just going to copy this up a few times. Also, I don't know if anyone here, like, watches 100% runs a lot. I mean, I imagine a lot of people do. Uh, I noticed in their blueprints, they have... Let's see... Where's the blueprint book? They have these. This is the main station. But then they have these. Does anybody know what these are for? Like, I have no idea what what they could um, be trying to get around. Because it's not like the lake can really block your way. It's not like a biter base is going to be a problem. So unless maybe you were trying to s avoid a resource patch... Like, that, that's my only guess. Like, if you needed to get a resource patch that was right next to your base. But I don't know if they're regularly regularly used. It could just be a backup. Because, I mean, obviously it's not good to have to go, like... Well, I was going to say that much farther from your base. But honestly, we need to go that far from the base just for a regular train design. <laughs> oh, I, that's, that's great. So they're... Uh, backup design is still cheaper than our primary design. I got gotta love it. <laughs> this is so much cheaper. At least we don't have to pay for chests. Actually, that's not true. We have to pay for way more. Actually, no. Yeah, at least we don't have to pay for chests. That's That will offset the cost, right? Saving 20 chests. No, 20 to 40 chests per train section. I, that'll totally make up for the cost of 400 additional cargo wagons, right? Yeah, I'm sure that ratio is the same. One can dream, at least. 
Okay, yeah, we'll definitely rebuild the stage and see what the start time is, because I think that would be good. Okay, so solid fuel is here. Now, we don't really... We don't really have a ton of solid fuel to use. We could... Ooh. This isn't a... This is a weird way to compress it, but it does get the priority I want. Because I, I want to prioritize the entire, like, dedicated fueling first. I think that makes sense to me. That can go there. Uh, we decided one entity isn't worth it. And then this just needs to sideload here. Right? Yeah, that should be okay. It's not perfectly balanced, actually. I might, I might add a tile. Uh, this uses one more entity, but it means if these become balanced at any point, it's not too bad. Because, like, here we can guarantee that they're pretty balanced. Um, we've split them fairly evenly, but I think it's going to reach a point where they're not um, that evenly balanced anymore. Also, I think I missed a fuel lane. Oh, I, I completely missed a fuel lane down here. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one is very important. How do we get fuel over there? I mean, that works. I want, I want to go through. But I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's fine. We'll, we'll just go around. It's a little bit weird, but not a huge issue overall. And then we're keeping this spot just in case I need to sideload stuff. So we'll just do that. Okay. Uh, this will start a little bit slower, but this isn't nearly as long of a lane as this one. So I'm not as concerned as it getting a dedicated belt. Uh, and let's see, this gets split off. Okay, we're good. Because like right here, I was very careful to make sure it got a, a full belt. But that's because this goes all the way up and down. Like this is... Actually, how high is that? Uh, that is 30 tiles? Not quite 30 tiles, right? Actually, it might be. Yeah, 30 tiles times 1, 2, 3... So two, four, six, eight. I lost count. Actually, let's just, yeah, two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Pretty sure I counted it, right? So that's sixteen times thirty times eight. Sixteen times thirty times eight, and that's ignoring all the horizontal distance, which is eighty. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, so we're looking at 4,000 solid fuel before all of these start working, basically, uh, at least, plus the internal buffers, so we'll say 6,000. So at a full belt, that is still a start time of 8 minutes. <laughs> yeah, this has got to be a run. <laughs> uh, we might need more solid fuel early. <laughs> this, this might not be enough. Uh, but I don't know if we could build these fast enough, so maybe maybe we'll just have to deal with it. The future lanes aren't going to be as big of a problem. It's just a problem right now because this is our entire solid fuel production. Actually, wait. No, it's not. We'll have these. They're not hand-built, but we'll have, we'll have whatever we place here. This is just uh, pre-bought stuff. Okay, so we can probably send more fuel up and get an extra lane or two out of this. So we're definitely going to have a fuel compressor on the side. I'm very curious how much fuel we'll have on the belt at the end. Someone actually, uh, someone requested I check that when we finish the run. I think if we just look at consumption versus production, that gives us a good idea of how much is on the belt and how much we consumed. Obviously not, not right now because we're just spawning stuff in. It doesn't count as production. But that, unless we get to the millions... Actually, we will get to the millions. We'll have accuracy with a hundred thousand within a hundred thousand, which probably is fine because I imagine there's going to be like half a million fuel on the belt at least. Actually, no. Have can we do an estimate real quick? Let's see. We have five thousand, fifty thousand belts. So, n absolute minimum, we're looking at four hundred k, but that's also counting undergrounds and regular belts as one. But that's also not. An, considering half belts so I guess that's not really an estimate maybe they cancel out but I would not be surprised if we have at least 300,000 wasted on the belt plus like another like 
200, 300,000 inside the machines itself. Uh, anyway, let's go back to this. This seems fine. I think we should continue this forward and compress again. Now, iron is still coming from the top. So we're just going to spawn it in. We'll, uh, we'll move it where it needs to be later. Because we don't have a second iron lane, so we're just assuming it's still coming from the top. And then up to this point, we have used... I, I think I can... I think I decided to make the assumption that this is a full lane. So this is one. This is two red belts. This one's three red belts. Actually, this one's not a full well, though. No. This one plus this one is three red belts. Okay, so we have an entire extra copper belt left, which we can send up here. Because we only produce slightly under eight. So if I make the assumption that these are full, it probably cancels out. Because we will get about slightly under eight out of it. And these also consume slightly under eight since I'm rounding up. So we should be okay. Um, I guess I might as well leave that gap so I don't forget. Or I can go on the other side. Actually, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, we could shift it over. No, we could, we could shift it over. But this needs to be an underground anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, iron comes from the top. Solid fuel. Let's see. Ooh, this is an important one. Okay, this needs a dedicated solid lane too. Solid fuel lane too. I wasn't expecting to have a solid fuel compressor on the end. I thought we would have much more localized solid fuel production, but then I realized how expensive solid fuel production is. Uh, but yeah, we'll probably... We'll probably carry no more than two with us at any given point. Like, I don't think the compressor is going to be huge, but it definitely needs to have some, some kind of compressing so that we can do more than we're producing locally. Because if, we uh, if we can't pull from the stuff produced, we're produced below us, we are doomed. Okay, so that's good. Compress, compress. Actually, we need to shift it over. Uh, that's not really helping, is it? Nah, that's not helping. Although it looks like we might be able to save a belt here. Nope, never mind. We would have to make that a red belt. That is not worth it. Okay, so that full lane is going here, and I really want this to be a full lane, because this is a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of stuff that is trying to fuel, and it's also fueling the red belt, the blue, the blue science. Yeah, we, we need a dedicated lane here. Okay, and then we could do what we did b last time, actually. I kind of liked that. Or we compress it, but this one goes the other way. And then once that's backed up, it powers... Actually, that's a bad idea. That's a bad way to do it. It worked here because the lane was so short. It doesn't work here because this one is... <laughs> this one's like four times longer. Uh, that will take a long time to back up. Okay, we'll just, uh, we'll just stick with a, a normal compressor. There we go. Then, yeah, we'll, we'll sort the compressor part out later. Actually, since this doesn't really matter, maybe I should just change it. Oh, that's why, yeah, because this was a very short lane. That That's why that's why I can make that assumption. Actually, since it is such a short lane, we might as well just prioritize the short lane. And then we should be fine. I imagine we're going to have to do another compressor here and shift everything a tile. But this this might be a point where I need a supplemental lane. Or we'll have a supplemental lane coming from the side that will just like kind of uh, angle in. Not sure. Oh, there's definitely going to be a lot of solid fuel potential that just isn't used. on um, that's just because we don't really have a... We can't really use everything we're producing. Okay, so this is a weird design. I don't think we have a ton of options here. Yeah, we, we don't have flexibility here for iron, so iron actually has to loop around from the side because of the way we designed it. Which is okay. Like, this isn't, this isn't a problem, I don't think. Uh, very, very easy to set up. And then we could even shift this, since solid fuel is going to come from the bottom. You can shift it like that. And then I think it still has the same end result. I don't know what this is. Oh, this is supplemental iron. Wait. What? No, I don't know what this is. Um, I've, I've got nothing. 
I have no idea what this is. Is this just solid fuel? <laughs> is it solid fuel? No, that doesn't make sense. What is this belt? <laughs> okay, so this one is just kind of there. I'm going to load an older version because I feel like I'm missing something. Maybe I accidentally deleted something just now. But I don't, I can't make sense of that. Uh, that's just an empty belt with nothing on it. Do, 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 do. There we go. It takes a while to load. We're, we're getting to pretty large file size these days. Also just being the, the mod is very heavy. Okay. Um, I don't know. Okay. It was here. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Okay, what if we load an even older version, like 1.5? That, one, that one's pretty old. Surely it's intentional, right? I, I feel like that's a pretty big oversight if, if I'm not supposed to have anything on the belt. But I don't know what it could be. Like, I don't think I would just leave a gap saying, I think I need this later. Stage 5... It's empty. <laughs> okay, uh, that means we have to use that means we have to use logic for this. We we can't just try to find where the where it has anything on the belt. We just have to figure it out for itself. Now there is a possibility I just accidentally copied it. There's a like a non-zero chance of that, which I guess is implied from the word possibility. <laughs> but I, I might have just left it. Like there is a lot of vestigial structures in our base. That's the right that's the right word, right? As in, like, they're just kind of visual things that uh, don't really do anything they used to. And now they're just there, haunting us forever. Okay, so if this was solid fuel, let's see. Ooh. Oh, it's a copper lane. Oh, that's a, that's confusing. No wonder why I couldn't figure it out. I have a copper lane side-loading next to the iron lane. Okay. I mean, that's kind of cool. Six and ten. Wait, what? That ratio doesn't track. That's we don't have enough furnaces for that, or we don't have a we don't have belt throughput for that to work, right? Hmm. I think this is supposed to go one tile more. Actually, wait. Yeah, that that's probably it. So this is, let's see, 13 plus 5.5, so that is 18.5. So if we make this, well, actually, these can't be a furnace. Okay, so we're at 18.5. No, let's say 16.5, 18.5, 20.5, that's so close. That is so close to not being necessary, but we can probably stop there. Okay, there we go. Now, now we should have enough iron copper on the belt. Okay. Actually, since that is so close, it might be better to have it stop here. Uh, these are also rotated. Unless we had a supplement. Oh, wait, we have a supplement, too. Are we supplementing at the right spot? Probably not. Let's see, that's um, 7 plus 3.5, that's 10.5. So we actually need to supplement probably one segment later. So this is exactly 12. So we actually want to supplement, supplement here if we're making this assumption. Can I do that? I think so. Let's see, let's copy this as a backup, because we're probably going to break it. <laughs> so we just need to move this awkward side load a little bit farther away. That's not any different, is it? It's supposed to go after. It's supposed to go here. Like that? I think that fixes it. 
Yeah, that's uh, that should be right. So that's eight plus. Now the start time is going to be a little bit lower because it does have to fill an internal buffer of sixteen. But once that happens, it should start working. And I mean, the start time is already in the eight minute marks. Like, <laughs> what 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 does it matter at this point if we add an extra a couple minutes to fill the internal copper buffer? Like that's that's nothing really. A hundred. No, 50 plus 100. 150? Actually, no, not even that. Probably just the 50. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, ooh, I built this wrong. Wait. Oh, I just forgot to continue this. Okay, never mind. That's, uh, that's good. Okay, so now we have to mirror this on the other side. But that should be fine now. So if we take that, 17 plus half, 22.5. Okay. And then a copper lane here. Okay, we're really pushing it for how many copper lanes we have, actually. Because uh, I didn't, I did not notice these ones on the end. Let's see, I think I have to count furnaces. Let's see. This is, this is forty-eight. Uh, forty-eight plus eighteen. Eighteen times two, and that takes us up to here. And then we have another, oh, this one's a weird number, uh, 24.5 plus 9, so 33.5 times 2. So this is what we're at, I think. So that's, what is that? That's such a weird number. Uh, 48 plus 36. Oh, wait, we have a calculator. I mean, I could do the math. Uh, the numbers aren't that hard to add, but I really want to use the calculator because we've never really used it. Up to get whatever that number is. 48 plus, actually this is a, this is a classic four function calculator. We actually have to do it in the right order. <laughs> 36 plus 77 plus 48 divided by 48. Okay, uh, we do have some headroom actually. We do still have some headroom. Uh, this is how many lanes of iron. That's how many red belts we need. Uh, that's what the this number is, I think. Yeah, since I divided by 48. So that takes us up to here, which means we do actually have some spare resources for this. Okay, cool. I don't know how we have spare copper, but we do. And that's I guess that's what matters. Okay, and then this will continue from here, and then I guess we can send it up. I'm very worried that the red belt cost is going to be way too high and we have to do some massive changes inside our base. Like, I knew we were going to have to add some production, but just the red belt gets kind of pricey. Now, one thing I am worried about this, it doesn't have the balance I need, so we might need a second splitter here. Because this one lane I don't think can combine into all of the others. So it might be fine. Let's see, where's that weird supplemental belt? Because this doesn't quite use a full lane. It, it's pretty close. Maybe we're fine. Oh, okay, that's why. Because this one also goes to the top, and then this one goes to the middle. That's a weird design. Would it be better if it was a different way? Yes. This should go up to the top. So that way when I split it off, I can send the excess up here if I want it. And I think I do need it. So this one can be the weird supplemental copper lane that I need so badly. And then this one can continue onward until the end of time uh, somehow. And that's still going to be a red belt, right? Yeah, that one's still a red belt. Okay, if I have to make any changes to this ever, we are doomed. <laughs> uh, but I mean, we we're figuring it out. Like, we, we've managed to figure out stuff so far, right? Surely it can't get worse when our base becomes more complex. That doesn't, that doesn't track. Okay, so copper is here. Can I change which side copper goes on? Because that would be really nice. Let's see. Uh, oh, I can't. I cannot change that. Let's see. What do I use to edit stages of a blueprint like this? Uh, it is called staged blueprint planning. I believe is the name. 
It might have 100 in the title. I'll check real quick. I believe it's called Stage Blueprint Planning. It's by Glass Bricks. Uh, it was mostly designed, or I'm pretty sure entirely designed, for 100% speedruns, like we're planning right now. Yeah, Stage Blueprint Planning. It takes a little bit to get used to, but it's really nice if you have a very large blueprint that you need to do in stages. Like if you want like all the RoboPorts and Power Bulls placed first, I can do that very easily. Because you can just basically build your whole blueprint as you want, and then just... Like for basic staging like that, you can do like a filter deconstruct to move them to a lower stage. It's really nice. Uh, but it's commonly used in the for designing speedrun bases where, you know, you start with the entire base, but you don't want to build it all at once because that would take like hours. So you break it up into like 20 something or stages that you paste as you go. But it's, it's really cool. It doesn't work well with editor extensions unless it's been fixed, but I don't think it has. So if you have any mods that do like weird pseudo entity things, just be careful. Uh, it can like just destroy all the functionality <laughs> uh, if it decides to uh, not work with those. It's so, like things like highlighting, um, like highlighting, I th let's see, which one did also broke it? Oh yeah, like one that highlighted inputs and outputs of inserters, that one broke the mod for me. And uh, editor extensions, that uh, that was a really bad mistake. <laughs> we had to manually copy like every stage, and even then we still lost some stuff. I, I think we didn't lose much of importance, but yeah, it, it is risky to use it with other mods like that. Still very worth it though. <laughs> like editor extensions doesn't save nearly as much time as this mod does. I wonder. This is the correct side of the belt, actually. Oh, but we can't get coal here. Is there anything I can do to do a side swapper here? I, I don't think I have a ton of flexibility. Yeah, ju just because of space purposes. Because that's the only that's the only part that matters, right? Yeah, that's the only part that matters. Uh, basically, the issue I'm running into is I need to get solid fuel from this onto this belt, and we just don't have a ton of space to work with here. Let's see. This this is currently how it looks. If I did this, this technically works. If I can also switch which side iron is on. But I don't think that fixes my problem. That that just switches what side iron is on. What I want to do is make it that solid fuel can come from up here. I don't think that's going to happen. Because what we would instead need to do is make it that this is the belt that continues. And then this is the one that side loads. And yeah, that, that ain't happening. That ain't happening at all. <laughs> okay. Let's see, where is it? Oh, this is this distribution facility takes up so much more space than I thought it would. I don't know why I didn't think it would take up so much space, because we are trying to pass through like eight lanes of resources and two to four lanes of solid fuel. Like it's gotta take up space. I don't know why I thought I could make it in like four tiles. I, I think in my mind all of the copper would be consumed by this point. But like obviously copper goes all the way up here because it's literally like eight yellow belts of copper. Like that's a lot. But yeah, this since this isn't this since this ain't happening, we might as well try to make it work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. That that design's not bad. Now, if burner inserters weren't awful, we could just have solid fuel be distributed this way. But yeah, we can't do we can't do that because burner inserters are awful. Oh yeah, it is Affiliate Anniversary, apparently. I'm assuming the second one. Pretty sure I was Affiliate this time last year. But yeah, thank you. Hello, Will Droid. We can, we'll, we, can say, we can say your name correctly as a anniversary gift. How's that for once? Actually, did I say it right? 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're good. Okay. I don't actually see how I can get copper over here very easily. Well, okay, copper I can see. Uh, it's it's coal that's the issue. Okay, never mind. It's fixed. That that's all I need to do needed to do. What is this lane? This one is. Oh, this is the one that I can't split. I've said it right past like five times. Really? Oh. Um, I apparently my memory is not that good. I, I try to mix it up, but I guess I've been too distracted with the <laughs> with the designs themselves. I will I will I will get on top of that then. <laughs> that this can't this this can't happen. Uh, where does this coal come from? This is such a confusing mess. Which I mean, it makes sense. There's a lot of belts going everywhere. Uh, this is this is the one we needed. Okay. I know, right? How how dare I? It's gonna like bring a curse upon my family for daring to say someone's name right. Okay, that works. Uh, we can save a couple entities, but we do run into balance issues for the resources if we do. So I figured I might as well not not risk it. No multiple. Oh, true, multiple curses. One for every time I say the name right. Does it save entities if I move this up and sideload later? No, because it just adds the entities here. Okay. We could shift this over. No, that doesn't save entities. It just makes it more costly. Okay, uh, I think we can live with that. Like, it's never going to be ultra it's super clean. Oh, wait, can we? We can do this. Right? That's that's a little nicer, at least. Do tunnels take longer to transport the farther distance? Yeah, yeah, they're basically just invisible belts. Uh, they don't they don't have any difference in functionality other than being able to cross stuff. So the main advantage of them is that they're fewer entities and also easier to work around. So like travel wise, it doesn't matter, but this is going to build three times faster than this one when it comes to bots. So that that's why we see undergrounds in places. Uh, they are more expensive. I never remember the ratio. Let's see, this is... So this costs nine iron. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> shapes.io. Really? That's the... I did not like that. Oh, because it counts as a link. <laughs> oh, and shapes, they take additional time. Yeah, no, they don't take additional time. They well they take the same amount of time as as the belt would, I guess. They're they're not slower than a belt, at least. It's like if I put an item in both of these, they should get there at the same time. Yeah. It just kind of goes invisible. Yeah. Okay. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I feel like that would mess with a lot of their optimization logic if it didn't. But yeah, the main advantage is it's just up to three times faster for bots to build for yellow belt. And when it comes to red belt, it's up to four times faster, I believe, because of the ratio of eight to two. Then for blue belt, which obviously we're not using because burner inserters. Also, blue belt's terrible anyway, uh, in terms of a speed run. Five times faster. Plus, I mean, when you get to that point. Actually, I was going to say plus way faster than the yellow belt, but that's not matter. Why is blue belt bad? Well, for burner inserters, you just straight up can't grab from a blue belt like 90% of the time. So for me, it's especially bad. The main thing is just it's incredibly expensive for very little gain at that point. It's like you might be able to justify using it in short spurts, uh, but it is three times expensive per tile. Three times it's expensive per tile, which is very costly. So it's it's so much pricier that... Well, I guess when you account for the belts, it's at least two times more expensive per tile. But it's it's such a massive increase that it's not necessarily worth uh, the iron going towards it. Just to save a few entities. 
Like, yellow belt to red belt, you aren't that much more expensive. They're not, like, unreasonably expensive, and you're saving a lot of entities, but the gap here is too large. But for burner specifically, it's just, um, it, the belt just goes too fast. It doesn't like it. And now it's going to die soon, probably. Okay, it did manage to get one before it died. It was pretty close, I think. And now it's dead. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a little too risky. It can only work at high saturations. Hello, Osnar. Welcome, welcome. Let's see, did we get this? Oh, actually, yeah, this, this looks pretty good. And then we might as well keep this going straight. Oh yeah, that's why I placed the assembler machine. Uh, so this is 9 iron, this is 18. So it's actually twice the iron to do undergrounds. But it's at the point where we're at a point where twice the iron is, you know, 10 to 20 isn't a big difference. Then red belts to undergrounds, the cost is actually the same or similar. I think for blue belts, it's twice the cost. Blue belt might actually be cheaper. <laughs> How's the designing go so, going so far? A uh, pretty decent. Mm, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with that. Uh, we're, we're connecting a lot of belts from the... <laughs> from the trains right now. Which I'm hoping I can widen, decrease the gap here, but actually the more I build, the more I think we're actually going to have to increase the gap because I feel like we're running out of belt space. But I want to connect all of the belts now because I feel like I'm pretty content with the amount of resources I'm producing. And then for the most part, if we change anything, these belts are fairly easy to reroute a little bit, as long as we aren't, like, completely missing, like, say, 20 iron lanes in, like, one segment. But yeah, uh, have you seen the trains? The, the train design is really fun, I think. I, I could give a brief tour of my, my train design, because I, I like showing it off. I'm very, very content with it. Okay, where does this go? Okay, these are short belts, these are short belts, so this can actually split again. I wonder if, oh, this iron, ooh, actually, wait, I can change which side the iron is on, can't I? I can, I can, okay. Let, I'm gonna, I'll just finish this up real quick, uh, because I just had an idea, and I, I will forget it. <laughs> I, w I will, <laughs> okay, so this goes there, however, since we switch which side that's on, we need to rotate this belt at the end, which is totally fine. So copper or solid fuel is now on the bottom. So that's just simple as that. That's that's all it needs to fix that. And then this one, hmm, probably something like that. So again, we swapped it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good. We don't have enough space for it, but aside from that, it works. Um, I think that's fine. It looks a little bit cursed, but it's always going to when you're using burners. So like, that's not necessarily a flaw. <laughs> okay, and then I want to keep these not as undergrounds because if I keep them as if I keep them not as undergrounds, they're easier to fix later. I think that's right. It looks like it uses a lot of underground, but I, I don't think it uses an unreasonable amount. Because it does need one splitter for... It needs one splitter for every lane minus one. So we're doing four half lanes, so we need three splitters. So yeah, I don't know why I keep thinking we need fewer splitters when we do. I think it's because I'm so used to smelting lanes looking like this. With just like an inserter, inserter moving the the fuel, that I forget that um, we can't really do that, <laughs> so we're going to have a lot more splitters instead. Okay, that is a bit of a mess, but I think everything's set up properly, and that's what matters. And then now, now that we moved iron, we can actually fit the copper here. Perfect. Okay. And then I remember we changed something about this design. I think we changed where 
copper connects, so copper needs to connect one lane over, which is totally fine. This actually connects I don't know what that belt is actually. Now now that I'm looking at it, I I really don't know what that belt is. I think that's good. See that we realized we had these off center. Uh we had them at a ratio of like six to fourteen, which doesn't work. Uh because half lanes, like technically it works if I count the furnaces, but I need to care about the belt throughput. Okay, uh, that should be fine. Okay. Uh, we have... I don't know what to do with this extra half lane, so we'll worry about that later. Because uh, I actually need to run this uh, and see how the fuel goes. So let's uh, let's just look at our trains for now. So this is the train design. I think I need to actually set it up. Let's see, we have a blueprint for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It is on a weird... Actually, have we re-blueprinted it? This is not the final design. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, these rails are breaking things. Okay, so basically trains break if you um, use the stage tool. Not entirely sure how I fix it. But yeah, we, we clearly we clearly permanently broke something. Well not permanently, but definitely not good. Okay, we'll just uh we're gonna make a backup save because this might require us to redo our entire design. <laughs> but yeah, I wanna get the trains here so we can actually test to see if things are working. Also, this should be the copper lane. Let's do a stage move. Because I want to test if it actually works in practice. Okay, so that can go there. And then... We can connect the two lanes. Oh yeah, I am very happy that we're using trains. <laughs> I cannot imagine trying to connect, like, four belts like this. Considering even one train is kind of annoying. Okay, and then we lost all of our iron, that's okay. Uh, that's a little bit too large, though. <laughs> there we go. Uh, also, it shouldn't have even been an iron lane. It should be a copper lane. Perfect. I'm very happy with the train design, though. Uh, basically, burn inverters suck, so we move fuel around and, like, recycle them. It's really cool, um, but it is a little bit rough. <laughs> you can confirm shapes I.O. as tunnels and paths seem to be the same speed no additional time is added okay that makes sense just from like a like you probably couldn't compress the belt if it well i guess i guess that's tactic wouldn't be any different than doing this but if you can avoid doing that you might as well it's probably probably the idea it would be funny if the tunnels added a little bit just because they're a little longer like to account for the fact that it's going like downhill and then uphill later Although that might just be mean. Okay, let's see if this works. I think we just have to rebuild the train. Oh wait, that's why that's why we blueprinted the train. Ooh, we can actually think sometimes. Nice. Oh we we actually blueprinted the nice one, the correct one too. Awesome. Very awesome. Yeah, very very nice actually. Uh, I'm still considering doing rocket fuel. But we haven't fully decided on that yet. Because rocket fuel is fairly cheap. It's really just the internal buffer that's a problem. Uh, it does look like we have a train issue here, though. Because this is not going yet, and it should be. Oh, no. Never mind. It's fine. I think I just used to have them stop at an earlier point. Cool. Uh, it's not working still. Are these broken? Oh, it's because they never stopped at the main lane. That's fine. 
Uh, we just have to make them do one cycle first. Okay, now everything should be good. But basically, since we need solid fuel at all the outposts, and we need... Uh, we need fuel for the inserters as well that also need that solid fuel. Uh, each of the trains takes about 2,000 solid fuel with it. Now we can just get these started. The start time is about 5 minutes, I think. No, like 10 minutes before it actually can move enough fuel. But that's expected. So it unloads it at the end. See, this is going way too fast. Uh, it, it unloads it, loops them back to feed the train and to feed the burner inserters, or the burner drills. Uh, the burner drills are straightforward, right? We just send the spare fuel there and it feeds them. A uh, typical burner lane. Now for these ones though, uh, these ones are more interesting because these are set with a solid fuel filter inside of the wagon and then mostly iron. And the order here does matter for unloading just for consistency sake. It doesn't make a huge impact, but it does make it that the inserters are less likely to die early on because the first slot gets unloaded last. Uh, input input priority, I don't actually care about. We just want to make sure this is unloaded last. Uh, that's just to handle any edge cases. Now when it's starting, all of them are going to die, but because we're not producing any, any iron early on, it doesn't really matter. But that's because they all start at one time and just fill up the entire wagon in one go. <laughs> uh, they don't like that, but it fixes itself immediately. So these are all self-feeding, aside from, actually yeah, these are all self-feeding. They're set to logic, so that way they only work when the belt is backed up. And that is to make sure that there is solid fuel on the belt, because if there is not, uh, they will brown out trying to grab from a fast-moving red belt. Now, the they're working now, so I'm not entirely sure why. But it doesn't look like anything browned out, so I think we're okay. Yeah, I think they stopped working since they all moved at once. That That's what it is. Oh, <laughs> these have the wrong... Yeah, this isn't designed to be... Um... There we go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this was not designed to be generic, because uh, there isn't really any way to do that. I, I should have just left it at iron. So I guess we don't have to make our stations flexible, because we can't. Uh, but yeah, there's such a logic that makes it that they don't run until the belt's backed up, and that's just because if I don't do that, they have a very high likelihood of browning out before they get any fuel, which kills the run, basically. Um, I mean, I, because we're not, like, really competing with anything, uh, it wouldn't, like, fully kill the run, but it will make it that we just don't get production for a very long time, which would be bad. So I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to have to lose literally 90% of my production just because I didn't have logic. So it's very useful logic. And we have solid fuel on the belt, so that way they can self-feed. We do lose about 2% of production max uh, train capacity because of it, but it's worth it. Uh, so that's the loading station. And then when it goes to unloading... Let's see, is this one... Do any of them have fuel in it to show? No. We'll just send this back to load then. Because now something should have fuel in it. There we go. And they're only single-headed trains, but... Because we have so many, it's totally fine. Which is why I think I really... I, I probably need rocket fuel, because that, that delay is a bit too long. Okay. Uh, and this is why the order of the solid fuel is important. Because there's only seven solid fuel in here initially. If they unloaded that first, there would be a strong chance that some of these didn't get fuel. If they, like, ran out or barely had enough uh, initially. So this just makes it that they all can top off their fuel after the, the copper is drained. So if I just like artificially give them some more resources, you can see there. Got to prioritize the copper. And then it sends the solid fuel back into the main tree, the main train station. We can't use any chests anywhere. We could technically use chests in the unloading, but 
it's very costly and can technically brown out the entire base, which is bad. Well, it wouldn't do... I don't think we would softlock the whole base, but we can technically softlock like an entire chest. But if we really want a buffer, we can technically unload into a chest. But there's some edge cases where that can cause like these two to back up and never get fuel. I think the odds are low, but I don't think it's worth risking it. So yeah, it takes a, it takes a lot of trips for it to actually get started. Especially when it is not built correctly, what? Huh. I don't know what's happening there. I think we, uh, we made some changes and we forgot to... Flip some belts. <laughs> okay, yeah, this belt wasn't flipped and this one wasn't getting fuel. But yeah, it, it's a pretty solid design. For all of this, though, we need a grand total of five 2 7 trains, and it only moves 3.7 red belt of resources. <laughs> I think the theoretical max is a little bit higher than that, but the amount we can get from a patch is gonna be no more than like 3.5 red belts, or like 3.75 red belts on a good patch. So it's, uh, it's rough. <laughs> this is a lot of effort for that few, few amount of resources, but it's either this or we connect eight belts to every single patch, and we do that 12 times. So it's either this or we manually connect 96 yellow belts. So, you know, neither of them are good options. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out. It seems to be very consistent. It's not terribly expensive. The biggest issue with it is the lack of buffer. The start time's really bad, but that's just because the trains aren't actually set up properly. So I can't really, uh, can't really blame that one on the design <laughs> overall. Uh, it was not meant to be converted to an iron. But yeah, um, it's pretty, pretty decent. I, I really probably need to consider a buffer chest for the output, though. Or rocket fuel. I think either would work. Because the idea with a buffer chest is obviously basically the same. Uh, you do need a larger solid fuel buffer. So if you use an, an if you use a buffer chest, you actually need 100 solid fuel every time instead of 50. And that that's really the only the only condition. Uh, you just need to make sure you have 100 solid fuel because you need to power twice as many inserters. But I think it might have a huge performance impact if I do chests, which is one of the reasons I don't want to do it. Because that would be about 1,500 additional inserters running constantly, which is a lot, plus, running, plus reading from chests, I think, is pretty bad. I don't know if it's better than no chest, but the 1,500 additional inserters is, is a bit rough. Hello, Carla. Welcome, welcome. But we'll, we'll see, uh, once we get the whole base up and running and we're doing some stress tests, that will be a good idea to see if we actually need need the chest. Because it could be that our average consumption is low enough that the belt buffer is fine. Because like right here, when things aren't backed up, or when things are backed up, this is about 30. So that's uh, 140 plus this. That's probably about 300 backup resources. That's not a ton, but that is about 10 to 15 seconds of the belt running before we need more resources. Uh, just from the, the belt alone, which is why I don't think we necessarily need chests. They are, they are buffer, they are chests. Okay, so let's see, we are on the wrong layer, I think, because we are testing trains. I can't believe we like broke everything though. I wonder if these will actually fix themselves. They might be just, just permanently broken. I, I do love how it takes like genuinely like 10 trips to start working. <laughs> uh, I think it won't be in as bad in practice. The main issue with this is just getting the fuel initially. We'll probably make it that we send a building train and the building train is going to have like four cargo wagons worth of fuel. Because that's a, that's a reasonable thing we can do. 
I have no idea what's happening here. I don't think... I don't think the stage blueprint mod likes trains being on belts. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to fix that, though. I think we just have to accept that everything's bad. Also, this is weird. What? Why is there a conflict? Actually, yeah, we're going to have to do a rebuild and hope that things fix themselves. Okay, let's go back to... Let's go back to working on this, because we were pretty close to finishing this lane. So this is one yellow belt. This is split perfectly in half. Uh, this does actually basically consume the entire yellow belt, so we can probably can't take any more from that. Now, I think we might need a compressor, because I feel like we have... Yeah, we, we definitely need a compressor, probably compressing to the left. Which, yeah, that's going to get expensive. Well, actually, no, it's not. Never mind. Three splitters isn't that expensive compared to everything else we have. And I guess if it's balanced, that also kind of works as a compressor eventually once it backs up. Okay, and then moment of truth. Does it matter which side solid fuel connects here? Um, no, no, it does not. We can make either work. So copper comes from the bottom. That's obviously a good start. And then if we want it to be consistent, I guess we can do that. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, and then solid fuel needs to connect here somehow. And then iron's going to come from the top. Okay, once we, get, once we get a good idea of where we need to hook up the second iron train, I think things will look a lot nicer. I, I like how I have this one belt of solid fuel or a sulfur. I feel like we can do more sulfur here because this isn't actually a bad spot for me to do sulfuric acid because I might need sulfuric acid production to go here and here because right now it's only produced in the middle of our base which might have issues with pressure. It, I'm not entirely sure because I think the total production is very low or the total consumption is very low but it's not but because the production is also low and the consumption is low, that can cause some pressure bottlenecks. Let's see, where... Oh gosh, how do we even find that? There it is. Uh, 142. Yeah, that's really, really low in terms of belt saturation. In sort of pipe saturation. So I don't think that's a huge concern, but it is something I need to be aware of. Because that can break. That can break a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, we, we do need our sulfuric acid to not, to not be broken. I wonder if we need a coal belt. We might actually... Ooh, we... A coal train would be nice because it's really easy. <laughs> but I feel like we don't necessarily need a coal train. We can probably manually connect a coal belt. Because I think we only need a grand total of, like, two coal belts. So unless we wanted to repurpose some of that coal into solid fuel, or to replace solid fuel, we definitely don't need a dedicated train for it. And then we'll worry about the compressor later. I think once we get this up and running, it'll make a lot more sense where we need a compressor. I feel like if I side swap this, bring this back in, we're off to a decent start. Because right now, this makes this, like we're just kind of shifting sideways and I don't think I want that. So let's assume that it's worth it to just kind of shift to the left instead. We can delete this outer layer. Yeah, I think, I think that's a fair assumption, because if we just keep shifting outwards, uh, that will get very, very messy very fast, and it's already pretty messy. Okay, oh, uh, that's an easy, easy connection at least. There we go. And now I have this splitter here. Uh, mu much nicer, mu much closer to, much closer to the action. Voila. Okay, and then we can even save a few entities. Okay, uh, it doesn't really fix our solid fuel issue, but it does make everything closer so we don't have to worry about the mess anymore. Now, solid fuel needs to connect here, which, honestly, we could just sideload it. Um, that's not necessarily a problem. We could also connect it here, I think, easily enough. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, definitely, we'll, we'll definitely expand this. 
but it's definitely easier, I think, to add add more compressing later when we realize we need it. Uh, the entity cost of the compressor is going to be pretty high. We're probably going to have like a thousand belts with solid fuel on them, but it's totally worth it because it removes the need to have probably at least half the ill half the kin plants. Like without the compressor, uh, without the compressor, we um, we need way more. <laughs> Or we have like 30 to hour start times. Uh, those those are basically the two options when it comes to burners. I'm going to be honest, uh, neither of them are great. Okay, I guess we can just... Uh... I mean, for testing purposes, I want to have infinity chests here, but I also want to test the trains. Maybe I just test the trains later. I, I think that's our easiest easiest option. We can just kind of ignore the trains and hope that we didn't mess up our, our distribution. Because uh, that's really the only the only reasonable option I see right now. Is that worth it? No, but we might as well save that one entity that was doing nothing. Okay, I mean, that's all right. This is a fairly compact. It doesn't use a ton of entities for, for what it is, for moving eight lanes of resources. This isn't too bad, uh, 200, 200 entities. I'm gonna move this. So I think that was just a cosmetic thing. Yeah, that was purely cosmetic. Oh well. Okay, uh, so we have one lane of iron. Actually, we're only up to two lanes of iron so far. And then I think that's one red bell of iron. I think I actually want to have steel be supplemented later. I'm not entirely sure. I think we need, need to do another count because this is 53. That's a weird number. Uh, these are definitely idling. I'm pretty sure these are inserter limited because we can't run 53 furnaces. Uh, so that's 67. So that is three yellow belts of iron. And then this one is weirdly staggered, but we can say this is two yellow belts of iron. So that's five. This is seven. So seven yellow belts of iron is technically one entire patch. However, it's pushing it. Uh, it's definitely pushing it. But I think I think we'll be okay, because this is the this is going to be entire. These two are entirely hand connected patches. That's why they're not connected to the trains, because these need to be up before bots are done. So this will be like the last copper, the last stone, and the last iron that we hand connect. And we'll probably get coal somewhere. I don't really know how we're going to hand connect coal. Ideally I would want to hand connect coal before I switch to a controller, which means I would want to do it before trains. But it needs to be connected up here, so it would be silly to do it really early. We might just have to do, we might just have to accept that we're going to do the coal connection really, really early. Because I don't see, I don't see much of a situation where, where it matters. Like I don't think we care that much about wasting a few resources early on. But yeah, super happy with the train at least. We can probably also decrease the internal buffers because I think these will get expensive. I don't know if I want the solid fuel to feed the train though. This, these might get fed from a different splitter. Oh gosh, I wasn't even considering how much the outposts take. How much do these cost? Uh, I'm assuming that doesn't tell me. It does not. Okay, so this is 300. So max 300 times 150. What is what does that come out to? 300 times 150. And it's an auto save. Oh, so we can't use this menu while it's saving. <laughs> some some menus we can use while it's saving. One fifty times three hundred equals four forty five megajoules. Or for, sorry, forty five megawatts, which is three solid fuel per second, right? Oh, oh, four solid fuel per second. Okay, so that's not too bad. So this is only a quarter belt of solid fuel on average. It's just the initial cost is. 30 solid fuel per second for like 10 minutes and then it drops to four which is why overproduction is something i've emphasized so much when it comes to fuel because that is a drop of a hundred that is a drop of 90 percent like that is massive i guess a little bit 
a little bit lower, probably like 80%, because we do have a higher average consumption than it seems, just because we're technically recycling some, like, 5% of the fuel every time. But it's still, it's still pretty rough. Okay, so we do have a little bit of extra copper. But not much. I think this is supposed to be split into two yellow belts, though. Yeah, this is this isn't split right. Because that goes into that, and then it continues through. Because we should technically have a little bit of copper left, which we can use for this top lane. At least as a supplement to get it started. Because if we can get this started before connecting another copper lane, that's still pretty nice. But we should probably plan for this getting some connection. Because we're definitely pushing the limits right now of our, of our train. How do I make a note of this, though? Let's do an input fryo from the right, and then we'll do a copper lane here. What if I what if, what can I what can I use as a symbol? Combinator maybe. What is what is a standard I could use as a as a filler lane? I guess is is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> So we would want compressors at the front, and then... I guess that's fine. I guess if we're always using the top lane as a filler lane, things work out. But then we would want it priod. But I don't want it priod. Maybe I just do... Maybe I just yellow it? Not entirely sure what logic I want there, but basically... At train... After seven... After eight belts, use supplement fuel. What's affiliate anniversary? Uh, it means I was able to start making money from Twitch two years ago from like subs and stuff. That's what affiliate is. Apparently, uh, I I didn't know, I didn't know I was affiliated on June twenty second, but apparently I was. <laughs> uh, that's when I first started averaging enough viewers for it. And had enough followers. That's your default message? Sure. <laughs> that's, that's a great default message. But yeah, it has like a big pop-up. For something that I uh, d wasn't even aware of. <laughs> except for the couple people pointed out. And the brief notification I got when I started. Yeah, this looks okay. Uh, this this is the best we have right now, and it looks honestly it's it's decent for what it is. I think it's decently clean. But the fact that we have to use splitters for all of our fueling really complicates things. Just because we need a higher throughput than burner inserters can provide, so it just looks way less clean than you would have you know if you weren't using burners. Okay. So this switches to starting to use... Oh gosh, this still uses a lot of copper, actually. But I think we should do a copper lane, or an iron lane, and then a copper lane, like, right next to it. I think we actually have to move our power. Because this is just, like, a test power. It doesn't actually run. Uh, so we can just kind of move it off to the side. Hello, Tyus. Welcome, welcome. There we go. Uh, I noticed uh, this mod does not really like trains when it comes to the stages. Uh, they kind of break things if you move the train track. Uh, so I think we permanently destroyed a little bit of this section because uh, there are some errors that I'm terrified to get rid of. I, I think they're fixed, but I'm still scared. Sometimes the errors are bad. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll bite the bullet at the end of the stream. Maybe it's fine. At least we have logic here. I think the logic works now. It's like if I put a single iron here, I'm pretty sure everything is... I think everything stalls. Excellent. Uh, we'll also want an alarm, actually. Oh, we need to get alarms. Wait, is it not called an alarm? What's it called? Sound machine? What is it called? <laughs> Speaker? It's called a speaker? Really? Okay. Good to know. Thank you. 
<laughs> I had no idea that's what its name was. I like sound I like sound machine to be honest, but yeah, speaker does make sense. I guess it gives alarms. It isn't necessarily an alarm. Okay, so can we copy the same logic? Does that work? Everything equals iron? Or everything equals copper? Pretty sure that's all it needs to do. Programmable noise generator. Exactly. I didn't do it right. I did not do it right. It's still going off. Um, why? <laughs> um... We'll keep it, there we go. Show alert, alert is copper. Show icon on map, perfect. Um, multiplayer annoying machine, true. I'm confused why these don't work. Does it make more sense if I do this? Sometimes this helps. Okay, we're gonna have to cheat. <laughs> we'll learn from someone smarter than us. <laughs> Anything. That's all. That's all I needed, okay. Makes sense. <laughs> so now... <laughs> Should work. You should enable global playback. Isn't that, oh wait, that's actually good though, right? Actually, I guess I don't really necessarily need a sound. Cause I mean, this isn't in multiplayer. <laughs> this, this button mostly affects multiplayer, huh? <laughs> oh, unless I have so many of them. Uh, Yeah, I guess I mostly care about the, the icon. Or mixing. Mixed ore trains. There we go. Okay. Now let's test this. Oh. And it stops on the belt. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, very straightforward. This is so much red belt. Uh, okay. We need to increase our red belt production. I... I think that will be the goal of next stream. More red belt and red underground. Like, we desperately need larger red belt and red underground production, I think. And it's going to be in a very weird spot. It's going to be, like, it's going to be, like, off, off the side of our base. We haven't really built anything outside of our main base yet. But we're, we're going to have to build something here because we just need... We need extra red belt, and it can either be here or it can be here, but we don't really have enough inside the base. The other option is to use yellow belt and double the size of the, double the width here. That also is a very viable option, and it doesn't, it doesn't complicate what we're working on that badly, so it is a very valid option. Okay, so we need another copper lane and we need an iron lane. Now it doesn't really matter how close they are, I don't think. But if I try to line this up with where the iron first splits off, that should be good. So this one should be iron. So we need to change the logic to all be iron ore. Then change this to be iron. Uh, I just went with the default sounds. I should probably find one that I actually like, huh? <laughs> that would be mean. Double the spaghetti or double the spaghetti? That's the real question. Honestly, yeah. Uh, some runners do red belt production at iron patches, so that's for like the later patches. I 
that's like um though that's for backup whenever your outpost doesn't have enough it's not something that's viable to get back into our main base though do i like any of these no <laughs> Nope. This one's not that annoying. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, converting to yellow bell is possible. So that that's probably the better option. Um the if if we can't get enough red belt. One one belt of iron might actually be enough red belt. Because the thing is I don't think we have one belt of iron going into any red belt assembler right now. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I love the alerts. What's this? Oh, that's kind of cool. But yeah, um, basically uh, we need the belt to be in our main base. Uh, generally, if they do on-patch red belt production, that's for when they're doing like the main outposts later that are so far from the base. And if you build the patches too close to each other, you can kind of like mix the... I think it like mixes the undergrounds and maybe you don't have enough. Or if it's too far from iron, you can just be a little bit short in the outposts. So the on-patch iron production just gives you a backup so it eventually catches up if it's a little low. I don't think we can really do that for our designs because uh, burner inserters are already bad. We could probably do, like, do it next to the iron patch. It might be worth it. Uh, but that's a, that's a much later design. We don't have the resources right now to waste production that far from base. Yeah, this seems to work well. I think the spacing is good. So this has iron. goes here, and then it gets split. Right? Yeah. These are both half lanes, right? Yeah. Yep, they are. But yeah, converting it to all yellow belt is very possible, and not it's not incredibly complicated. Uh, we'll probably need to do a little bit of red belt for belt weaving purposes, or just for covering distances. But the cost of the yellow belt isn't that bad. Now I do need to check to see if we actually have enough yellow belt production too, because we might just not have enough belt production in general for this. Uh, this is all being built on the wrong layer, I'm realizing. Cool. Stage move tool. Stage move. Okay, we didn't build that much on the wrong stage, though. Okay, but these definitely need to be on the same stage. Which might be kind of expensive. Eh, no, they're not that bad. Because we, we need this iron to go here. Yeah, we'll, we'll be we'll be okay. Uh, so this is the last of stage three point two. So everything else is going to be probably four point one, I think, for the next one. Actually, I think after this point we need to go to the other side of the base, don't we? Oh gosh, <laughs> we have another side of the base. <laughs> let's do let's do one half at a time. Let let's just uh let's do the entire right half and then we'll switch to the left half because yeah we have. Five we have to connect over here, and like six we have to connect over here, or something like that. I am realizing we might not have a perfect split. We might have to do one additional train, or... Actually, you know, if we have to do an additional train, just doing something like that is probably the best option. Because this is cheaper. I, I think this is cheaper than a, an extra train. Like having eight yellow belts go across the base at the top is going to be cheaper than the what 200,000 resources I need to set this up plus the 15 minute delay there so yeah unless it has to travel actually how how far is 15 minutes in terms of belt belt uh belt travel they go about three and a half items per second right or three and a half tiles per second so 15 minutes would be <laughs> 2,000, 3,000 tiles, something like that. Yeah, so not not a problem. 
uh, definitely not worth building an entire extra train, I think, in this situation. Because there's a good chance they're just not perfectly balanced. I think we're going to be short, like, two yellow belts on one side and two on the other. Uh, that's a very realistic scenario. Uh, but I'm happy with this. Uh, and this does actually consume both the iron lanes fully, I think. No, it doesn't. It actually has some extra. Which I think is good. I think we want to have a little bit of extra in most cases. Because we don't technically have four yellow belts coming out of this. We are... Or four red belts coming out of this. We are making the very strong assumption that... We're low on resources. Or, yeah, we're making a very strong assumption that, uh... We'll have enough based on things being low. Isn't it about two tiles per second? Oh, is it that low? I thought it was three. Maybe that's player speed. But yeah, two. Yeah, that's probably right. <laughs> I, I have the numbers in that <laughs> in a YouTube video somewhere, but I forgot <laughs> what they are because <laughs> it's been a while since I wrote that script. Okay, so two tiles per second. So that's still 2,000. That's still like 1,800 entities. I think that's still travel time is still lower. Yeah, because our base isn't 2,000 tiles wide. So even if we have to go from here, 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 and here, that's still faster than setting up a train. At least for the, the remaining belts. Obviously, we want to minimize how much we have to do that, but we can afford to do it a couple times. Okay, and we're going to make the assumption that we need another lit copper lane. Which, this one, I guess, honestly, yeah, lining them up with as low as they can go is probably the best bet. Although, the closer I make them, the less flexibility I have. Uh, it's easy enough to move the trains, right? Yeah, I, I think... Like, if I set it too close, I don't really have a great opportunity to turn it into yellow belt. So I might add four tiles. One, two, three, four. Actually, I think that adds 16 tiles. Uh, but either way, now I have the opportunity to split them all into yellow belt. I, I think this probably needs to be red belt just because it makes it a lot more compact. And this doesn't use a ton of red belt. It's really this that adds a ton of red belt cost. Actually, you know, it's about half and half. Right? Actually, no, this is what I'm comparing. 150. Okay, so yeah, this is about 60% of the cost compared to this one. So if we could even just re eliminate this output, I think we're good. I don't know how, the, how much the cost would go down, though, if we get rid of Red Belt. There has to be a ratio, right? Like, if we can assume it's just based on belt throughput. This is half the iron. That's not that much. And that's that's assuming no full length either. So because this goes a little farther, 40% less iron, not even half, like 60% of the iron, 70% of the iron. Yeah, the cost savings seems pretty low. Actually, wait. Hold up. Oh, wait. Never mind. That's 17. <laughs> uh, so this is 72. Yeah, okay. Half is probably right. Um, probably not. I, I, I don't think, um, I don't think manually connecting a train is really going to be worth it for the play style that I'll have to be doing at this point in the run. Like, I don't think man, I don't think manually connecting belts is that viable with a controller. We'll, we'll see. Maybe it's not that bad for short distances. But I don't think it's that common. I, I think I would much rather just go to a farther patch. But we'll see. We'll we'll do a little bit of practice with the controller to see if I can connect a short short belt fairly easily. Especially if I can do it with just straight belts. Red belts 99% of the time, they are too fast. Now it's gonna end in too low production. Oh, that's a good point. I do need red belts later as well. So I might as well have them produced early now. So that way when we get to this point we can do our late future outposts. 
maybe we can honestly if we do more iron plus if we do more red belts early we probably can cut back on this one a little bit which i don't think that will help much because i imagine we're going to have a weird number of iron weird amount of iron over here but could be useful okay so this one is this one is an iron like can i label them not really that's fine and then this one is actually on the wrong layer, right? So this is when I said we're going to switch to layer 4.2, I think. Yeah. This is when we switch layers. Okay. So we have plenty of iron coming from here. Actually, is this a bad spot for iron? I, I chose this spot because it's like close to the base and I need to get two belts of iron for all of this to start. But the travel distance for most of this iron is really high. <laughs> I, I guess if I put, if I swap them, it, it's high either way. So I guess it doesn't matter too much. Oh, I do like the, mm, I guess one thing to consider for Red Belt 2 is the entity cost is really low. Like if we're talking saving like a thousand, two thousand entities, like we can probably save enough entities to get more red belt production and have it save time with how much <laughs> with how much belt we're placing. May maybe not that drastic. Because 47 would become about 120 probably. Multiply that times 10 for the amount of trains we have. Yeah, that's about a thousand of these from the red belt. Yeah, probably not as drastic as I want it to be. Okay, uh, more connections, I guess. Let's see, we have the iron lane. And we have... Is this the one that I wanted to be supplemental copper? No, this is the one that I wanted to be supplemental copper. Then this one can be moved to a different stage. Because this is the thing where... We probably have enough copper to support this, but I'm not sure, so we need to make sure it can get extra copper from this original lane. That way it can keep running, because we have a very weird number of lanes coming out of this. But I think we can start this early with just the leftover copper. Uh, and then once we get mining productivity, it will balance out again, because that's another thing. We, we have this amount of lanes while we have mining productivity, we don't have it initially. But we should be getting mining productivity pretty fast. Like, we should have almost four tiers of it uh, by this point, And then we'll have the fifth one soon. Because it only takes us about, I think, an hour of rocket launches for us to get all the mining prod we need. Which sounds like a lot, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's a 12-hour run. It's not that bad, right? Okay, so that is there. We split that into two yellow belts. Now, these are... These are actually full red belts. Okay. What is this and this? Uh, that is unnecessary. That's what it is. Okay. I'm surprised that was the correct layer. <laughs> I feel like usually my infinity chests are on the wrong layer. Let's see, if we use a red belt here, it looks nicer. That's a silly reason. <laughs> actually, no, it's, it's practically better too. Okay, never mind. Now it's, now it's not just a silly reason. Yeah, I think we actually have an extra an extra lane too on top of this. So this can go and this is the this is the supplement that just needs to make its way down here so things can run. And then this can have a belt which actually needs to be on the lower layer otherwise things break. 4.2 and just force delete all of these and I think we're good. I mean, that looks okay. I feel like there's a lot of solid fuel we still need to do. So I, I'm actually kind of concerned with the solid fuel distribution. I, I think we're going to have trouble with solid fuel. Uh, it would be helpful if we could do these early. I think we could possibly use those. So it might be a little bit... might be a little bit weird. Compress, compress. And then another one here. Yeah, that, that's a fair assumption that we at least need the compressors there. And then I think these being built in stage 3.2, yeah, definitely a good idea. I wonder if we'll like look back and realize we could cut out like 10, 30% of our solid fuel. The, 
there's probably a good chance we'll overdo our solid fuel in a lot of places. But honestly, the infrastructure of the solid fuel chem plants is not that high. I mean, it's expensive, actually. But it's not... It's not awful, right? And we probably don't need one per train. That, that's another thing. I'll probably realize I can cut half of them before we even start the run. But that will, we won't know that until we do our actual test run. Wait, what is this? What is this? What the heck is this lane? <laughs> um, that is a coal belt. Okay. That is a weird coal belt, gotta say. But it does make sense why it's there. Okay, so coal is definitely still necessary. I don't know where we're going to get it from. I think that comes down to that question someone asked about uh, close patches. I feel like coal is going to be one of the main contenders where we probably need to connect a close patch by hand. Because I don't think it's going to be worth it to connect this with a train. Because it's one of the things where uh, we only need like two belts of coal, I think two or three extra belts of coal at this point, it's really not that much. Because two belts of coal is like four belts of plastic. Yeah, stone as well. Well, stone will actually have connected before we even have trains unlocked, and it probably will connect all of the stone we need for the whole run. We can probably say a similar thing about coal as well. Because I think we only really need stone over here. Unless we have a stone patch up here I forgot about. Yeah, there's a surprisingly low stone requirement for uh, for this run. <laughs> yeah, but Purple Science doesn't need a lot of stone. It needs, like, two belts, right? So, like, we're going to connect one stone patch. And that will give us all the stone we need. Because that is seven... That's seven yellow belts of stone. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> Because you got to keep in mind, uh, we have significantly lower furnace count, significantly lower production requirement for purple science, like half the re production requirement for that. Uh, average science per minute is like two. Peak is like three. Sorry, that's per second. <laughs> uh, average is like 120, I think. During like while we're researching, peak will be like three. Uh, just because we start with only a third of our science production. But it, it's very low. <laughs> I, I think we only have two belts of stone going into a total. Or three belts of stone, if we count bricks. Pretty, pretty low. We have that, and then we'll have leftovers from the the bricks. I, I don't anticipate we'll need extra. I might be missing a lane somewhere, but we should be fine. And then we have like an entire belt going into stone furnaces. Let's see, 120 is about three yellow belts of stone. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds about right. I, I think we have about three most of the time. Maybe four during like peak production periods, like when it's getting started and we're still building rails. We, we might have to do a second one. We definitely don't need more than two. But I'm hoping we can find like a solid stone patch like right here and then we're good. Although it's... we do have to get stone from here over to here. At, it, at that case it might be easier to find like two small patches. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to roll on... we'll have to roll to find some new patch. Uh, just some like test test maps to see what actually works. Your neighbor just started a party and at 10 p.m.? That sounds about right. Aren't neighbors great? <laughs> I'm very glad that we don't have any neighbors that are close enough to where we can hear them. Normal base have like seven yellow lines of stone? What do you mean normal base? Like the normal hundo base? Has nine? Okay. So we could probably make do with seven. So I guess for us it's Okay, I, I wasn't sure if you just meant, like, a normal base, like, just casual players tend to have, like, seven. Don't know why. <laughs> why I assumed that was the interpretation. Oh, wait, this needs... 
This needs fuel. Okay, we're doing 4.2 here. Wait, what? There. I'm sorry, what layer are these on? 3.2, okay, sure, why not? I guess that's fine. Not, not a huge deal, at least. And then we turn it down. Sure. Uh, that is necessary for, necessary, necessary for side loading. Might as well keep it. But yeah, if they can make do with nine, we can probably make do with seven. So I guess for our case, it's more positioning than it is. Yeah, for us, it's definitely going to be more positioning rather than total amounts. Because one full stone lane is about seven lanes. It's just, we need two of those lanes over here. <laughs> So we have the option of having an underground go like, I don't know, what, 200 undergrounds? Yeah, we have the option of having like 200 undergrounds going around, maybe 300. <laughs> or making a small patch here. Gotta love it. And then I feel like, I feel like I missed a solid fuel lane. Oh, I missed the coal lane. Okay, well, that's going to be, that's hard to compare. Because coal isn't really something we can convert to solid fuel. Or or use it in the same way as solid fuel. How are these all rotated? <laughs> uh, I think it's good now. Okay, uh, go back to port point two. What is this being edited on? Okay. There's a lot. Oh, we haven't done entity savings here yet. Uh, this is fortunately a very easy entity to save. Wait, why am I doing 4.2? Oh, oh, okay. I am editing the wrong layer right now still. There we go. Okay, I, I see my mistake. And then we have another awkward copper belt. Oh, wait. That means we have to redesign this, right? Because we realized our mistake with how these were split, so we need to fix this one. This actually goes one segment over, and then it gets side-loaded. So this lines up here, and then this continues through. I think there works, because I realized this needs to be 12, uh, and for some reason I did not have it set to 12. Okay, there we go. Now now we can do entity savings. I'm actually curious how much we're saving. So that has 374... Actually, what, sh what should we measure from? Here to here, uh, 351, 125. Well, let's see how many entities it actually saves when we start replacing this with undergrounds. Then I measured from this edge to right right after the uh, infinity chest. Because I think on average we only save three entities per five tiles, but we have so many like segments that can't be perfectly straight uh, that it's hard to say if that's um, our total savings or just uh, sometimes. Like right here, we can't save any entities on that side. Uh, but we can save entities here, it just doesn't save as many, it saves half as many. And like right here, this isn't worth it. That complicates it a lot. Well, it complicates it complicates any doing any estimates a lot, at least. Why did I make that one short? <laughs> that, one, that one's silly. There's, I thought there was a belt there. I was trying to copy a pattern, but there wasn't actually a pattern. That's That seems like something I would do. Okay, underground, 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 and underground. I feel like those have a different pattern than the other way around did. What did I do differently? Oh, okay. I, I just did this one as a 3 and 2, and this one as a 2 and 2. This could be designed like this, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the, the best option. Okay, now that we actually have a pattern, let's just copy it. Okay. One more. 
And I'm copying them section by section because I'm not sure when we switch to the different design. Because halfway through we switch to from circuit lane to wire lane. And I did not want to mess up that connection because that would be bad. And these ones have like very little opportunity for entity savings. Which is just kind of an unfortunate side effect of using burners for everything. <laughs> uh, you really can't save a ton of entities. Okay, uh, there might be a couple spots where you could probably save like one. Like right here, we can definitely save one entity for free but i i think that's i think that's most of the savings okay so now it is 137 and 211 that is a lot of undergrounds <laughs> so so what did that what did that drop it by i dropped it from 470 to about 340 240 that's actually pretty decent 40 percent entity cost reduction well for belts <laughs> That's just looking at belts. Obviously, there's still all of the inserters, which are like a third of the entity, but eh, that's not, not, not too shabby. Uh, this section I completely missed when it comes to entity savings, because I still do not know what it is. I think it's a plastic belt, but it is very weirdly side-loaded plastic belt, so I have not wanted to mess with it. Uh, but plastic, this is going to be a lot of entities we can save. Like, this is just going to be a free... I don't know, 400 entities between all of those? Not bad at all. Okay, so coal we can just get rid of. Uh, this is an awkward copper lane again. I now remember what the awkward copper lane is. Uh, and we did decide that I can't really change what side of the belt it goes on. Pretty sure it was the decision there. What is this and why is it on the wrong layer? don't know what that is, actually. Uh, we're just going to delete it. Or force it to this stage and then delete it. I feel like there has to be a way to delete the things on future layers with one of these buttons, but... I don't know. Like, maybe this one? But it doesn't seem to work, so maybe, maybe it's just not possible. I mean, that is always a possibility. Like, some things probably you just can't do in the mod. And I just don't know what those are. Hey, that can connect there. Actually, we can connect it lower. That might be easier. Let's, see, let's make this staged. Drop it down a layer and move this. And then this is somehow in the wrong stage. Oh, I, I am editing these in the wrong stage. Whoops. I, I thought we had finished all of the things that were in stage three. So this connection is useless. Cool. Wait, how am I supposed to get copper up here then? Because we don't have any extra copper here. Am I going to have to do like a weird additional splitter? Because I completely forgot there's a top half. We can run most of this lane. I guess that's kind of the point of this. We're trying to run most of the lane until we get the next iron lane. Or until we get the next copper lane a little bit later. But we probably have to make the assumption that this needs to be split probably earlier, like right here. And then we send it up. And then copper needs to be on the bottom. Iron needs to be on the top. Hello, Igrel. I'm in pretty good. We, uh, we're getting close to, I think, finishing up our base. We're doing, like, the final stuff of, like, connecting all the fuel. But I think we have most of, like, the, the designs. Now it's just the tedious stuff of staging it and connecting all the fuel. Which is a big part of it. <laughs> but, yeah, things, things have been going good. Meme and Monday's having fun still, too. How are you? Yeah, I, I still think it's going to be like a month before you run it, but the base itself, I think everything's designed. It's just a matter of uh, confirming that everything's hooked up properly, which means we actually need to, you know, connect things first, and then we can stage it. Although, I mean, worst comes to shove, uh, push, <laughs> worst comes to some, Wor 
worse things worse and push comes to sub accidentally combine the two uh, same general meaning um if the staging breaks we can just place the final stage and the world doesn't end we can still beat the beat the run we'll just probably lose like two hours <laughs> at least so that's definitely not ideal but we could do it if we if we had to we could just do that walk away then uh resume it later in the day just raise our goal from 12 to 16 hours you just finished your exams congrats I always always nice to relax after them that's for sure i am not able to visualize what's happening right now let's see oh i know i know what we can do i know what we can do That is a weird design, but it does the job. <laughs> uh, and then iron comes from the bottom. Yeah, I, I think there's nothing inherently wrong with it. <laughs> don't love that. I don't. I don't like how I'm connecting iron here. It's awful, actually. The the fu solid fuel line I'm fine with. <laughs> I am not okay with this. What if I do, what if I push it back a little? Then it looks a little cleaner. Actually, does it doesn't matter what side iron goes on. We might have an easier time if iron can be on either side. Actually, no, it, it can't be. I mean, it can be, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't simplify things. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just connect this here. Uh, that's a short belt, so we'll just, uh, we'll just not worry about it. Are we building on the correct layer? We are not. <laughs> Actually, yeah. No, never mind. We're good. Okay, and then iron comes from here, awkwardly. Uh, is, and then this one, we decided it wasn't split correctly, right? Wait, what is this? This is a red belt going to a yellow belt. That's not right at all. There we go. What is my favorite taco? Hmm... My favorite taco used to, I would say I really liked the double decker taco from Taco Bell, but they don't have that anymore. But I also just like a classic like steak street taco. Th those are really good. You can't go wrong with that. Just like a bit of, a bit of like lime and usually onion or something. And then like steak on generally a corn shell. Sometimes they're in flour tortillas, but those are really good. But the double decker taco is my go-to at home just because, uh, it's a lot easier to make at home <laughs> than like an actual like steak taco because I don't have steak very often. But it's basically you take a card shell taco, right? Which is very much not traditional, but they're still good, so I like them. But then you also take a soft shell taco and you smear refried beans on it and then you wrap it around the hard shell taco. So then you have a little bit of a crunch, but not that much of a crunch. So it's not like it's not a risk to like retainers because I have to worry about that <laughs> uh, when I eat crunchy food. But then you still have some satisfying crunch and you also get the refried bean taste. It's, it's really good. Definitely recommend it. Uh, it's a good mix between a hard shell and soft shell taco. I think you can also make them with like nacho cheese in between, but nah, it, it's the refried beans that makes it good. Chicken tacos are all, all, are all right. Fish tacos, they're once in a blue moon, I like fish tacos, but they're very much like a, I want to feel healthy kind of thing, which is funny because they're usually fried and probably the least healthy because it's usually like battered cod or something like the same kind of stuff you'd see in fish and chips, which isn't like terrible, but you know, it's not. It's not like grilled fish or anything. Oh yeah, yeah. Like the the steak tacos are would be like the more like traditional ones, or the, or the the street taco ones are the more typical ones. But I I like all forms of tacos. Or just like meat, just a little bit of meat on a tortilla. I uh, can't go wrong with those. They're just not that popular around here. 
so they're they're hard to get, but they're definitely really yummy. Unless I want to make them myself, which I mean, I guess I can make my own tortillas now. I mean, I guess I've always been able to. Like tortilla presses aren't required, but I did get a tortilla press, so things are a lot easier now. Okay, now we're building on the wrong layer too. Okay, it is very con this layer thing is very it gets very confusing. Oh, uh, this is not the right button. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to move these closer. In fact, I think we're probably going to have to move them farther away. Because <laughs> the more I look at it, the, the more it seems unrealistic for us to be able to uh, save any space. Because we're just kind of like shifting. Yeah, one type of filling sounds about right. Like, really, really small with just, like, a meat in it. Maybe, like, a meat and onions or meat and cheese, meat and lemon juice. But, like, um, oh, there's a great song. It's called White People Taco Night, which is sums up, like, a very common, like, American tacos, which are very common, either a soft-shell tortilla or a hard-shell tortilla. Usually ground beef, lettuce, cheese taco sauce and seasoning um which are also very good they're very very different <laughs> they, they don't taste anything like but they're very they're still good in their own right they just uh have a very different taste but i think they're all wonderful which is why i have songs about tacos because i just think they're all good <laughs> in whichever form Okay, so I think this is going to have an incredibly high start time, so I think I actually need two belts of fuel here. Yeah, because I can't really split this one. I wonder if I can find it. Uh, no, I, I can post a picture later of Taco Bell's <laughs> Double Decker Taco. But... It's a, it's a pretty straightforward, I guess, if you know what a taco shell looks like. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's like our, our typical like dollar tacos you can get at any um, American Tex-Mex style restaurant. Oh gosh, why is there, why, why do I need so much fuel? Why, why does my run that uses fuel instead of electricity need so much fuel? <laughs> why, why could this possibly happen? Okay, so this is the spot where I realize. Wait. Is this an iron lane or is this a copper lane? This one's the iron. This one's copper, right? Yeah, okay. So iron all comes from the bottom. And then we have this split. This is one full belt. It goes over here, which consumes half a belt. So I should be able to split this and send it up to this lane, right? Oh my gosh, I completely forgot about the LDS build. <laughs> it's been a while since I've looked at it. I I really hope this does not have any flaws because it is not fixable. <laughs> oh boy. That's gonna be that's gonna be fun to troubleshoot, huh? Okay, uh there's the there's the iron lane. Goes up here, loops around. Uh, it does. It is missing at a very critical side load, though. There we go. Okay. And then now we need a red belt, and we need to send more iron up. Guys, we're gonna have so so much, so many undergrounds just for like moving these iron lanes around. Uh, I guess technically I can belt weave this. I don't think it's worth it. I I think avoiding belt weaving when I can will just be much less of a hassle later. And then I did mention I wanted to stop going right with everything, because we have just been kind of creeping to the left indefinitely, which is not good. Uh, that will cause a lot of problems later. Let's see, where are, we, where are we at? Okay, we are in the right stage now. That's good. Hmm, that's a little bit pricier than I would like. At least we can start doing undergrounds here, though. Undergrounds, there we go. Is there anything I can do to make this go one tile farther? I think I can, right? 
Not really, actually. <laughs> uh, I could go up and around, but that doesn't seem to be worth it. No, nah, well, I, I can avoid a side load that way. Because, like, which is more expensive, 100 iron or a few extra entities? I think at this point, because we're up to, like, stage four and a half at this point. We're fine. Yeah, we could move the solid fuel input, too. Oh yeah, I guess it doesn't waste any entities, does it? Okay, so now we can go around, and then that can go through. Okay, and then now this can be moved a little bit more to the right. I think that fixes it, right? Okay, cool. Uh, I didn't fully build it correctly, but aside from that, it worked. Uh, thank you for that. I did not see I can move that at all. Okay, and now we run into an issue here as well, but it's not as severe. Honestly, I could just do this. Because these aren't that expensive. And then this is where it stops. Perfect. Okay. And then that does use an entire lane. So then this other one can go up here, which is... Oh gosh, <laughs> these are just going to get more and more complicated the farther up I go. I don't know why I thought things would get easier. Uh, in my mind, I could start copying and pasting. That's, that's not happening. <laughs> I don't think there's any part of this design that implies I can copy and paste something from a different area. <laughs> Which I guess is the downside of, you know, designing a base to... Oh, these are the wrong color loaders. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's the downside of trying to design something to actually, like, be compact in a lot of spots. It is not flexible uh, at all, <laughs> uh, even remotely. Okay, and this should actually be this kind of belt. Yeah, I think we can actually get one more copper lane here. I just don't know how. Uh, the reason I'm connecting them this way is because I want this part to be something I can copy. I don't want to mess with that half, which is why I'm just kind of forcing the underground connections on the left half instead. And it's just because we haven't fully decided how large the gap should be. Uh, it's very easy to move this if I haven't put any infinity chests on that side, but it's kind of hard to do it the other way around if I just like break things. It probably doesn't make a huge difference either way, but I should at least try to be consistent with something. <laughs> Can this go through? This might be able to go through. Never mind. I, I don't think this is that bad. I, I think it looks worse than it is. And then this is using I think this looks like it's using a whole lane, and then this one is also using a whole lane. Okay, so I think that's connected right. This one technically has a little bit of spare, but I don't think it's something to be concerned with. Okay, so that's one lane of copper. This is one lane of copper. This is one lane of copper. Okay, so that means we have three lanes of copper. Which means the other one has to come from here. That's not a problem, though. Okay. Regular underground. That connection looks easy enough. Uh, we've already connected the solid fuel, although we might be able to do something to connect it a little bit better. But I feel like there's a lot of entity savings I could do here. But this is one of the... I think this is one of those things where I don't save that much to try to improve this. Like, if I were to compress all of this, I could maybe save, like, five, ten entities at the end of the day. But it would increase the time it takes by probably a total of, like, uh, an entire extra stream. <laughs> uh, so I don't want to have, I don't want to hyperfixate too much on those kinds of design changes. Unless they just look like a really fun problem to solve. 
but those can be reserved for two point, version 2.0 <laughs> if we decide we are crazy enough to do this run again. What is this connection? That's a weird connection, though. That's just silly. There we go. That's way better. And then we could actually sideload both of these later. And then this is the, the thing I was mentioning, I've mentioned before, where I want to keep them as long belts if I can, because those are a very easy thing to fix later. So this should actually be here. Actually, no, that, that's right. We just need to make it one tile less. There we go. I think that's okay. We're basically, uh, we're getting to the point in the run where the side, the sides of the resources matter. So I don't really want to try to like make these connections compact because we had flexibility early on because these designs are straightforward, but like, yeah, <laughs> uh, this is a much different design. Uh, we have to, we have to make an executive decision here to not go too crazy there uh, with redesigns. Uh, we somehow broke this, which I think isn't necessarily a problem. Okay, I'm hoping we can count correctly. Obviously, we'll, once we once we have power, we'll probably have to add something that voids everything in our base, but we'll be able to double check if if we have enough production fairly easily. At least once we have all the mining productivity. I am hoping we have enough prios so that way mining productivity cuz there is there is a small chance that if we don't have enough production, one thing doesn't run, and if that one thing happens to be what we need for yellow science, we're doomed. <laughs> In space science, we're doomed. But as long as everything splits itself and balances out to at least get a, some production of everything, we'll be okay. Because we can live with 20% less, you know, productivity science. We can't live with zero. It looks like we need more solid fuel. Of course we do. What is this? This one no longer needs fuel. That was shifted up. This one does need its dedicated fuel lane. Okay. Uh, we're still on the same layer. Excellent. And then again, this one. Okay. Yeah, I think most of these lanes are going to be used. I think we probably don't need a ton for the top half, but we still need most of the solid fuel down here. Just because we need so many full lanes going into the base. Because even like a full lane going into here, I think we did an estimate earlier. It takes like 8 to 10 minutes for all of these to start. And that's with a full lane, so like we really can't afford to split them uh, too much, which is why we have to keep producing some. I might even have to do like an extra assembly machine in between here, which if we do want to do that, we can shift this up a little bit. And we also need to add refineries probably here. So I think having them in line with uh, the trains is fairly straightforward. Okay, uh, have, have I used the whole lane here? I don't think I have, right? This just uses one belt. Oh, but it, it never mind. That's all it has. It has one whole belt. Okay, so that one's good. This one gets split twice, but each one uses less than half, so I think we're good. Yeah. And then this one uses a whole. Okay, so this is good. This is good. So we have this entire lane here to work with, which we can send up through through there I think is a good spot actually let's make this one in the ground I would much rather waste a yellow belt <laughs> than waste a red belt just because it's a little little cheaper okay there is a chance that we have a little bit of spare resources in all of these but I don't think we do because this only needs actually it needs a full lane I was gonna say if it only needed like half of a lane like under half of a lane like some of these do we could probably just have a splitter and just take everything excess but it doesn't look like we have that to spare we actually just need a fast splitter here this can go around i just realized we do not have a way to get plastic to this <laughs> i have i accounted for the production of plastic surely i didn't forget entire plastic lanes right I'm going to make the assumption that I haven't forgotten an entire plastic lane. Because why else would I have it connected here? Because I'm if I had to guess, we're supposed to get it from here, but... Oh, gosh. Hmm. 
Is it supposed to come from here? How do I test this? Oh wait, this might this will this will tell us. Okay. Yeah, surely. <laughs> yeah, there are some things we might have forgotten. At least plastic's really easy to do with burner inserters. <laughs> like you don't have to you don't have to bring additional fuel. <laughs> okay, so plastic. Uh, we're not producing any plastic. Oh, there we go. Okay, we have an output of 150. Okay, that's good. A surplus of 115, or sorry, a, a surplus of one, or a deficit of like 1.7 out of 115. That means we definitely have enough plastic. I just don't know where it is and where it's supposed to come from. But we have the we have the chemical plant. We just need to figure out where it needs to come from. Route plastic to big LDS because. I don't know. I don't want to do that today. <laughs> uh, I think it's supposed to come from here. Because this is producing like four belts of plastic, right? Four yellow belts of plastic. No, two yellow belts of plastic. So I feel like one of these is supposed to go up here. And this only consumes... Yeah, so this only consumes one belt. A little bit over one belt between the two of them. Actually, it probably is exactly one belt. No, yeah, it's exactly one belt because it's a uh, split and these idle all the time or these idle a lot. Yeah, one of these is probably just supposed to be routed up. Uh, I think we're OK. So let's see, this consumes. Never mind. OK, so we can run half of the LDS and then the other half later. <laughs> I guess. Ah, uh, that's 30. This produces up to 60. The other half are here. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we have enough plastic. Uh, you know what? We're probably just going to put another plastic set here uh, and just get more coal. Because there is space here. <laughs> There's definitely space here, and I think this is too late, and routing half of this down here and half of this up, up here is going to be messy. But also, this is just going to be... It means LDS is going to start way too late, because there's a very... There's a pretty large gap between these two, I think, when I actually stage them. I don't know. I, I might just accept that they're one stage. One 7,000 entity stage. Yeah, that never mind. That's a bit unrealistic. Also, we might need to improve our bot production because one of the things where we're producing a decent amount of bots, but we also have a very high entity requirement. So I don't know if we if we have enough. But this this plastic belt actually looks really easy. We can just go out, up, down, split it. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, if we run into issues, we can just put a couple red belt and everything's fixed. OK, so this doesn't actually need to be split two ways, does it? Oh, it does. Never mind. No, it does. Well, let's just continue this through. We will sideload this here. And we're good. I'm trying to figure out why I had so many sideloads that looked like this. And I'm pretty sure that's because when I was copying and pasting it, I wanted the sideload to be the width of the lane. Just because it made copying and pasting two things together a lot easier, but... Now that we're like getting to the the details of the design, it matters significantly less. Wait, what time is it? Oh, I should, oh, I need to wrap up soon. Uh, let's see if we let's see if we can use this extra. Let's see. I want to connect this lane of copper first because this one is just kind of hanging here, and I feel like I will forget it. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> There's a very easy spot to connect it to. Wait, does this not need to be... <sighs> what is this design? I mean, that's a very easy connection to do, but what is this... What is this design that I have here? Oh, I remember. I remember now. This needs, like, three half lanes or something, right? Yeah, this is a... This is a three long copper lane. That's what it is. <laughs> or a three... Three half lanes together. So this needs a half lane of copper here. 
and then we'll need one half lane. Okay, so this will need a half lane. We're gonna remove that though. Probably here. Yeah, I think that's right. We're side loading that the wrong spot though. Just kind of giving myself markers for next time while I'm thinking of it because I, I definitely can visualize it right now. I don't know if I can visualize it later. And then this one goes here. Wait, am I supposed to supplement half a lane or am I supposed to supplement a whole lane? I think I changed how I designed it at some point. Okay, so this is a whole lane. So this is 1.5. Two, three, okay. So this is actually just one additional underground, and I think we're good. And then I guess I mentioned earlier this is yellow belts are cheaper, so let's use the yellow belt. Let's stick with that philosophy. Uh, I feel like I want these belts to go closer, but maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, and then half lane, half lane, half lane. This is a weird, this is a weird connection. <laughs> I, I think it's just because it goes so far, it feels kind of rough. Okay, splitter, and then another splitter. This one can do the half lane, and this is going to connect from this right half. And now we need something to take from the left half, which if we just go straight up, we should be able to do fairly easily. No idea what that is. Absolutely no idea what this is. Uh, we're just going to keep something here. But I think that was just my old quick and dirty uh, solid fuel lane. Because it doesn't doesn't make any sense to me. Which makes sense. Uh, a lot of times we just have to test to see if something works. And it's just not worth... It's not worth like doing a full like condensed redesign when I know I'm just going to be deleting it when I... You know, realize I need one more lane or something. We we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of these. I've I've been calling them vestigial structures because they're like mostly from like testing. Like they used to have a purpose a month a month or two ago, and now they're just kind of there, causing confusion for current me, but have no actual purpose. Uh, but this seems to be good. I think this consumes. This, this is kind of risky, because I think we might not actually have enough copper for this. Because, like, technically I have four belts going at all of these. But on the other hand, these will try to consume more than I actually have on average. Because I don't think none of, I don't think any of these are less than a lane, are they? This one technically is. This one technically is less than a belt. I think this one's copper limited, so this is a whole belt, this is a whole belt. These might not be whole belts. No, these are whole belts. Okay, so whole belt, whole belt, whole belt. Like 80% of a belt. This one's pushing it. Uh, we might need a supplemental copper lane down here. Add supplemental lane to second copper on right. Second copper train on right. Maybe, hopefully. <laughs> uh, how can I indicate that? Oh, maybe with like a loader with uh, with copper in it, because this is very clearly not not a full thing. So if I do something like this, and then like a splitter, this kind of looks like a supplement. Because, like, this is how I would set up a supplement if I were to use it, right? So, it would go somewhere like this. Uh, this is going to be copied in all of the future builds, I guarantee it. Uh, I'm going to shift this down so maybe I don't copy it. Uh, and hopefully it still gets the idea across. Okay, uh, that was a lot of <laughs> a lot of fuel connections, but that's like a third of them. And we're, we're getting better at them. I, I'm getting to the point where I think... I realize I can cut a lot of corners in the connections for these top halves and not make them as clean. Uh, it matters more early on because stuff is still expensive here. But the farther we get, the less expensive belts are, so the less I care. So we can afford to just do things like this instead. Because at this point, this is nothing compared to the 
96 LDS assemblies we have. Uh, which that reminds me, we do actually have a larger... We do have a larger rocket goal than an actual run, and a larger rocket launching speed. So these also idle really early. So maybe I don't have a problem here at the supplemental lane. Because like these will be running until the end of time, I think. Because this... The blue chips, I think, go elsewhere later. But rocket fuel stops having a purpose, and LDS stops having a purpose pretty quickly. Uh, after about one and a half, two hours, we've we've launched every rocket we need. So I think I think it's fine if these don't run perfectly. We'll probably just want to prio away from LDS, or actually, just we probably just don't have to worry about it. But yeah, uh, it should be it should be fine. The fact that these shut down is very useful. But I hope we all have a wonderful evening. We'll be back tomorrow with space exploration. Uh, we just finished up Vegemite, so I think we're working on improving Novice again. Because I realized uh, I have a steel bottleneck, which is due to a coal bottleneck. Uh, I am coal limited in space exploration because I'm only producing like one belt of coal total, which is not enough. Uh, but that's all we'll work on tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.